Hello and welcome to LNP's The Huddle. I'm Tim Gross and this is John Walk and Keith Schweigert. Uh, 20 games here for week three of the high school football season. We're here to talk about two of them. First, we're going to talk about Kutztown at Pequay Valley and then we'll go into Lebanon at E-Town. So our first one, game of the week, Kutztown at Pequay Valley. The Braves have won six straight going back to last year. Kutztown has gotten past its 41 game losing streak with a, a win last week. Guys, do you think uh, Pequay Valley is going to add to its win streak, or do you think Kutztown's going to start one of its own? Yeah, and the six in a row is a program record, apparently, um, and they have now won uh, two of the three games this year in comeback, comeback fashion, I should say. Uh, week zero, remember if they were down 13 nothing and came back to beat Schuylkill Valley 14-13, and they did it again last week. Um, in week two, down 18-3 to starting the fourth quarter to Octorera, came back to win that 21-18. to Guys, this is turning out to be a special uh, season for Pequay Valley, no doubt. Um, we already knew that kind of coming in, that, that they had some weapons, quarterback Jordan Lapp and running back John Horst. They provide a really balanced attack there for, for uh, Pequay Valley. And honestly, it's not much to say as far as Kutztown is concerned um, right. with the, the losing streak, 0-10 again last year. And, um, you know, I don't think it stops at all this Friday. I'm going with the Braves. Yeah, a little bit of trivia on Kutztown. It, they have lost 41 in a row. Uh, that was their first on the field win since September 17, 2010, when they beat Freedom Village. Uh, that's a school out of New York. They won that game 35-6. The, only, the last win they had before this 41 game losing streak began was a forfeit victory in the start of the 2012 season. So if you go back to that previous on field win, it was actually at 58 in a row that they had lost going into the, uh, if we take the forfeit victory out of the equation. so. Kutztown is definitely struggling. Now, they did pick up a win uh, and a pretty lopsided one last week uh, over Shenandoah Valley. Uh, that's up in the coal region where I come from. Uh, and Shenandoah's struggling. They're 0 they're 3 this year. So, yeah, they got, a, they got a win this week, but I don't, or last week, but I don't think it's going to be a habit for Kutztown. I, like you, I'm going to go with the Braves in this one. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I'm looking at the box score from last week, uh, Kutztown's box score. They, uh, they got three rushing yards, I think, uh, unless that's a misprint. But, um, <laughs> Uh, they also gave up 255 passing yards, so I think, I mean, uh, Pequa Valley is a pretty balanced offense, so I think you know, no matter what the Kutztown defense gives them, uh, I think they'll be able to adjust and uh, another win for Pequa Valley. Go so Braves. Going on to uh, Lebanon at E-Town. Uh, E-Town, of course, uh, has not given up a point. The three of us have scored more points against E-Town, or as many points against E-Town as uh, anyone in high school football. So. Uh, E-Town, two straight shutouts uh, against Donegal and Hershey. Lebanon had a big win against Ephrata last week. Uh, guys, how do you look at, the, how do you see this one shaping up? Yeah, interesting game here because both teams a year ago were both two and eight. Um, Elizabethtown, I think, is the bit more improved team. Last year, if you remember, they had lost the first eight games of the season. They kind of figured some things out near the end. Won the last two, they've won the first two of this year, so they've won four in a row dating back to last season is what I'm trying to say there. Uh, they've improved offensively. They're averaging 26.5 points a game so far this season. That's an improvement over the 11 points per game from last year. Um, week one was a balanced attack. They had uh, 208 yards rushing, 100 yards pass, 180 yards passing. Week two, they struggled running the ball, so they turned to Micah Garber. He threw for two, nearly 260 yards. Um, and they're better defensively, as, as you said, they haven't yielded any points yet this season. Um, Lebanon, meanwhile, yeah, they're one and one overall, but if you look at their num numbers, they have really struggled defensively. Um, they gave up 381 yards in a loss to Cedar Crest and 217 rushing yards in a victory over a winless effort of team last week. Um, and those facts alone, I'd like E-Town in this game to uh, move to 3-0. Yeah, I, I'm gonna agree with you there. I, uh Lebanon is going to be able to put up some numbers and get their yards, but their Achilles heel for the last couple of years now has been their defense. I mean, they, they just can't seem to get that figured out, and that's a, a, a pretty key piece uh, because now their offense isn't quite as good as it was maybe in years past when, you know, they, they had better skill people. They still have that quickness, but I don't think uh, they're equipped to win shootouts the way that they had won a lot of their games in previous seasons. And uh, as you pointed out, you can't get any better than not allowing any points through two games. So I, uh, I think E-Town's better on that side of the ball. I think they have enough balance on offense that no matter what Lebanon tries to do, they'll have an answer for it. So yeah, um, taking the Bears 3-0. I agree with you guys. Um, looking back to last year, both these teams were in section two. So they actually played the final game of the season against each other. Uh, that was a 28-21 for E-Town. And I think E-Town 
has taken even more steps forward and Lebanon maybe not quite as many. So I think E-Town still has the advantage going in. I expect them uh, to be 3-0 after Friday. So those are our picks. Uh, be sure to check out the Huddle's game picks every Thursday afternoon and check out LancasterOnline.com every Friday night for all the LL League scores and results. Thanks for tuning in.